Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So in our previous videos, we looked at how to set up Kubernetes, how to deploy an application on Kubernetes. We also looked at Kubernetes services. We talked about Kubernetes ingress and a lot of other things. But saying that we should also understand what are some of the classic Kubernetes challenges. I mean to say what are some of the classic Kubernetes problems and we'll also try to look at the solutions to these problems. So some of these problems does not have a complete solution at this point of time, but we'll take a look at alternatives or you know emerging solutions to these problems. So many people were asking me to make a video on you know production issues with Kubernetes. When you deploy Kubernetes on production, what are the issues that you might see or what are the challenges that you might see? So this is a video that I'm making for all of you and I have almost four to five years of, of experience working with Kubernetes. So I tried to put all of my experience into it. And, uh, you know, this is not the complete list. So I have only tried to put the top problems or top challenges that we face. But uh, if I get some time or maybe, you know, if this video gets enough love, maybe I'll uh, also address the other challenges and problems. But for today, we have some of these classic problems. So the first thing, and I think the problem that is also accepted by the community is the Kubernetes multi-tenancy. When I say multi-tenancy, yeah, Kubernetes supports multi-tenancy. Like, you know, you can uh, create a lot of namespaces on your Kubernetes cluster and you can ask one of your teams to uh, use namespace A and the other team to use namespace B. So this is not uh, the problem that I'm talking about. Kubernetes supports this and everyone knows it already. But the problem is that, you know, uh, let's say I want to deploy multiple versions of same cluster scoped resources. Like, you know, in Kubernetes, most of these custom resource definitions are cluster scoped. So let's say I want to deploy two different versions of same cluster, uh, same cluster scoped resource. Like uh, maybe I want to install two different versions of uh, custom resource X, let's say two different versions of Istio or two different versions of any other thing on my Kubernetes cluster. So this is not possible at this point of time. Like today you cannot do it because uh, all these cluster scoped resources or custom resource definitions are stored in Kubernetes etcd, which is its object storage. And uh, there are some problems uh, that Kubernetes cannot address at this point of time. So this is a classic problem uh, and uh, the thing is that most of the people are not affected by this because you know there is always a consensus and people come to an agreement saying that okay let's use this version of custom resource definition although you can deploy a custom resource definition with uh, different versions of custom resource but only one can be served at one point of time right so because of which uh, this is a problem and there are uh, control planes like KCP. So KCP is uh, a Kubernetes uh, control plane. Uh, I mean, Kubernetes like control plane, which is developed, which is being developed actively uh, by Red Hat and other, other uh, CNCF community members. And, uh, you know, with KCP, uh, you can actually install uh, KCP on a Kubernetes cluster or an OpenShift cluster, and uh, you can use the KCP control plane and it acts as a logical grouping of your Kubernetes cluster. So, uh, I mean, logical grouping of your namespaces as a Kubernetes cluster. So I'll not go into details of this one, but uh, you should understand that this is a problem. And uh, I have shared the links of KCP as well as V cluster. V cluster is the other project which is trying to solve this problem. So you can take a look at uh, both of these projects uh, to understand these things in detail. But in general, what they aim to solve is a, uh, the problem of multi-tenancy where you want to deploy multiple versions of same cluster scoped resources or custom resource definitions. Now, the other classic problem is security. So uh, let me tell you that there was a survey that is con uh, conducted on the Kubernetes problems and 46% of the Kubernetes users have voted for Kubernetes security as their major challenge or problem that they're dealing with. And the other problems, uh, I mean, I think uh, we are covering all of the problems that were, uh, uh, you know, opted in the survey, but uh, security was opted as the top most challenge or the problem with Kubernetes. So the thing is, security is a journey, right? Security is not just uh, like, you know, you implement the security and it is done. It's a journey where you have to deal with uh, your Kubernetes uh, security journey uh, in a step-by-step -step manner. 
now there are many security incidents that are reported in kubernetes like you can simply go ahead and look at uh, like the recent tesla incident or you can uh, take a look at multiple kubernetes security incidents you can simply search for uh, issues with kubernetes security uh, and uh, you will find a lot of security incidents well the most uh, painful point here is that okay so kubernetes address uh, a lot of security problems but the problem is that many people are new to kubernetes right so people have been using kubernetes for like 2 to 3 years 2 years or 1 year and they want to set up this kubernetes on an enterprise grade they, they want to take this to manage kubernetes service on aws they want to move to kubernetes on production but they don't have a lot of knowledge i mean uh, when i say they most of us don't have uh, proper knowledge on how to establish a kubernetes security so for which some of these things are like you know uh, effective kubernetes rbac rbac is nothing but role based access control you can set up uh, an effective rbac to solve this problem and the other things are there are lot of advanced kubernetes security modules like if you are on openshift you can use advanced kubernetes uh, uh, security cluster security or you know uh, you have other things like uh, stack rocks or there are other uh, security modules that kubernetes has so you have to choose your security module as per your organization kubernetes setup and then apart from this you have to define a proper pod security policies and network policies so let's say uh, you are deploying kubernetes uh, uh, i mean you are deploying an application in kubernetes and your application is able to access everything in internet and your application is also able to receive any traffic from the internet right so this is a problem like if your application is receiving any traffic from internet a hacker can easily access your application uh, from the internet and you know probably he can manipulate the details of your application and then he can hack through from your application to the other applications deployed in kubernetes so you have to set up proper network policies so that your pod like you know you can say that my pod can only accept a specific ip block like you know a, a specific cidr block only this cidr block can actually access uh, my application through the ingress security policies that i have configured or my application can only access specific website through the egress policies i mean egress policies so you can uh, do this and you have to configure proper network policies so again you have to have effective kubernetes rbac you need to use uh, proper kubernetes security modules like the ones that i have listed previously and uh, you have to definitely have uh, pod security policy and network policies okay after this one more problem that people faced with kubernetes and even we faced in the previous organization was kubernetes load balancer so i myself uh, i am a i was a maintainer for uh, kubernetes ingress controller uh, called uh, fi kubernetes ingress controller which is big ip big ip based when i was working for fi and the problem that i've noticed is there are a lot of ingress controllers ingress controller take care of your load balancing as well as uh, api gateway or you know devsecops do devsecops part of your uh, kubernetes where you know you can also deal with load balancing you can also deal with api gateway and web application firewall kind of things but the problem is that there are a lot of ingress controllers but most of them do not uh you know provide a production grade functionality like you know uh, when you are deploying your applications on on premises right before to kubernetes you have fi load balancer you have uh, polo alto as your uh, uh, firewall uh, configuration you have cisco you have a lot of things but when you move to kubernetes world all these load balancer like nginx what are the top or popular load balancers in kubernetes or the ingress controllers like you have nginx you have uh, ambassador you have traffic you have uh hp proxy these are some of the things that are very popular but all of them are most likely or you know most of them are very uh, lightweight proxies they are not a production grade load balancer like if you take example of fi so fi is a load balancer which comes with lot of other functionalities like you know you can you can do uh, web application firewall with fi you can do uh, things that an api gateway can do uh, right so these are the things that you want but when we were working with uh, fi ingress controller which is a uh, production grade ingress controller there are challenges for the users to set it up on their kubernetes cluster right so nginx is very easy to set up like if you have a mini cube cluster right and when you are thinking about ingress controller the first thing that comes to your mind is nginx and you can simply set up your nginx ingress controller traffic is very easy to uh, set up but all these load balancers like fi they are l3 uh, load balancers and you have to set up a proper vxlan tunnel so it requires advanced networking knowledge to set up these uh, load balancers or 
uh, load balancers as ingress controller so this is one of the problem and uh, then you need to have a proper integration between your load balancer and your service mesh because service mesh is dealing with your horizontal traffic where application to application or service to service traffic and load balancer is taking care of your external uh, traffic communication right so you have to set up a proper load balancer plus service mesh configuration or apa gateway plus service mesh configuration which again requires a lot of knowledge for the users so this is the problem with load balancers now observability right so observability is one of the key things that you have to have good knowledge when you want to move your kubernetes cluster to production because observability is nothing but it is all about logs metrics and traces so let's say today i want to move to kubernetes okay and uh, kubernetes is amazing with respect to auto healing so whenever a pod goes down so kubernetes automatically uh, restarts the pod or kubernetes auto creates this pod that was uh, deleted or crashed loop back off or any other issue with the pod but the major thing is that as a devops engineer or as an administrator of your entire organization you need to understand why is this pod going down when it actually went down what are the reasons for the pod going down and how you can solve this uh, in the future because kubernetes is auto uh, healing this feature auto healing this problem you have to i mean you might uh, ignore this problem whatever was happening so to avoid this you have to set up a proper observability what you have to do you have to collect logs of the entire uh, applications you need to actually monitor your entire kubernetes cluster to understand which application is going down when it is going down why is it going down and you have to you know have a proper uh, setup and proper understanding of all of these things so there are some tools today like prometheus uh, you have for uh, collecting the metrics and you know uh, getting all the information you have uh, alert manager with prometheus to send out uh, notifications for visualization you have grafana for log monitoring uh, i mean collecting the logs you have splunk and there are other things as well but uh, there is a lot of scope uh, in this space because when you are dealing with uh, multiple prometheus instances like thanos is uh, something that is emerging in this space but thanos is uh, currently you know there are a lot of things that thanos can improve so what i mean to say is that there is this is one piece of thing that every devops engineer should know and you should also know that uh, there is a lot of work that needs to happen in this space because kubernetes is not just kubernetes these days when you are doing kubernetes on uh, cloud providers like aws or azure so it comes with kubernetes plus cloud provider so you have to monitor your kubernetes cluster and you also have to monitor your aws or the entire setup so again uh, there is a new problem that is emerged okay so i don't want to confuse you a lot but uh, this is one of the problems and then the classic problem data stores right so when you are on on premises you are using databases like oracle you are using databases like mysql you are using uh, any other uh, databases no everybody can move their applications into kubernetes but you need uh, some special skill when you want to deal with databases right so how do you deal with databases because your applications can be stateless most of the times okay so let's say i have an application and this application is stateless but my database application is always a stateful application i have to preserve the state of my database right so i have to persist this data so for which kubernetes supports something called as volumes and you can persist your data with this volumes you can use uh, persistent volumes or you can use the other things uh, and when you also want to move to cloud providers you, kubernetes also supports this uh, volumes with respect to your cloud provider storage uh, services but again uh, you need to learn a lot of things to uh, effectively move you, move your uh, data stores from on premises to cloud uh, moving applications is very easy uh, you know if you have good understanding of uh, kubernetes you can uh, do it but for moving uh, data stores you need a special skill and uh, yeah you need advanced knowledge of kubernetes now deployment strategies so let's forget about kubernetes for a while so before to kubernetes we were uh, doing uh, application deployments everybody was doing application deployments in different strategies like the blue green deployment strategy or canary deployment strategy so what we basically do with respect to blue green deployment is you create two different sites uh, for your applications north side south side or you know bl blue side green side what i mean by that you create you have two different servers you have one version of applications on one server and you have uh, 
other versions of your applications in a different server like the new version of your applications in a different server and you can point your load balancer initially to old version and when you deploy your new versions in a uh, server b you can simply point your load balancer to server b and say that new version is available now if something goes wrong you can simply point your load balancer back to your server a which has all the old versions so you can simply do this but when we come to kubernetes now there is a problem uh, like you know how do you want to do this blue green deployment how do you want to do this canary deployment or alternate backend deployment or the other deployment strategies so like two to three years back uh, you know this was a major problem uh, because kubernetes predominantly uses the rollout mechanism like if you uh, use kubernetes deployment today what happens it will create a replica set and using replica set you can roll out your pods right you can roll out a new version of your pod but when you have 500 pods or when you have multiple versions so how do you do rollout right rollout is a process that takes some time and it is not any advanced deployment strategy right it happens step by step now you want to abort you want to do something so this is not a classic uh, like how do i say this is not a classic uh, kubernetes or any deployment strategy but now you have very good projects like, you know, you have a CNCF backed project like Argo rollouts, which can uh, solve this problem. And uh, this also does in a effective way than your on premises. Like, you know, if you're talking about Argo rollouts, this is a concept of progressive rollouts, right? You can integrate your uh, rollout mechanism with external metrics like uh, Prometheus and you can initially roll out 10% uh, of it. You can run some analytics. You can run uh, some of your tests as smoke tests as analytics. And if something goes wrong, like, you know, only 10% of your customers are affected and then you can immediately roll back. And all this process happens automatically using projects like Argo rollouts, which is a progressive, progressive rollout mechanism. I have a link for the project here. Uh, this is a very good project. And, uh, you know, if possible, uh, everybody should uh, start adopting this kind of new things with Kubernetes so that, you know, you can make your Kubernetes setup uh, very good. Right. So this is all I have for today and uh, all these links that I have uh, provided at the end of this presentation, I'll try to put uh, in the video description. And if possible, I'll also try to upload these slides onto my GitHub repository. And uh, you can also find, uh, you know, the uh, presentation link in the GitHub repository uh, that is also in the YouTube description. Right. So if you have any further questions, like we did not discuss, I know we did not discuss about all the problems, but I don't want to complicate this, like people who have a very little experience with Kubernetes. I just want everybody to connect with this uh, video that I've done. So if you have, if you know about some things that I have not covered, right, please comment them also in the uh, comment section so that other can learn from you. And also I can learn from you. And uh, if you like this video, please click on the like button. If you uh, feel that I have done uh, very good with this video or if you have done not well with this video also uh, put that in the comment section so that I can improve in the coming videos and don't forget to share this video with your friends and whoever is looking for problem with Kubernetes or challenges with Kubernetes thank you so much I'll see you in the next video bye